and they are gonna say oh if china is so good why do people still leave china to the u.s why do people still leave china to go to the west and visit so many people in the west and countries in the west say that all chinese gadgets will spy on people but the truth is that china has not attacked a country for at least a century if i'm not mistaken and i'm not saying that china is just this perfect society where everyone can do whatever they want and you have everything you want of course it's a work in progress my name is william oh, yeah william how are you william <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> this is nice, this is nice, look at that. Yes, yes. Everything in China is controlled, they said. You have no freedom in China, they said. China is a dystopian society, they said. No matter how many people come to China and they experience the real life here in China, the Western media and so many people out of China still say China has no freedom and you are not safe or if you visit many places in china you will be spied on by the government or by some police agents and you can't even walk around freely that's what they said well the truth is that the media wants you to believe that china is this very dangerous place with very bad people and bad government and everything happening in the world that is bad is caused by china but is it really true everything happening in the world that is bad is it caused by china is it linked to china death traps linked to china invading other countries linked to china spy machines linked to china spy balloons linked to china spy birds linked to china everything bad is it actually linked to china is china responsible for all the bad things in the world well i've lived here in china for about six years more than six years as i can say and i've had so many different experiences while living here in china well before i came to china i had this same ideology like some of you watching this video right now and when so many people even try to say or share their real experiences of living here in china people are gonna say it's propaganda or they will say you are paid by the ccp or cpc and that's one thing that baffles me every time because even simple travelers when they come to china and they share their experiences many people still seem to say oh this guy is paid or the government is sponsoring this guy to say good things about china the truth is that no place is perfect guys now in this video i'm gonna share with you guys some outrageous lies that many people tell all the time again some people even said china is about to collapse the chinese economy is collapsing and china is going to war with taiwan and wow too many lies and no matter how many people come here and share their real experiences it's still a problem and i really don't understand the reason why so many people tend to believe all of these lies from the media and even here on youtube there are still so many youtubers sharing such lies and of course i'm gonna share with you guys the reality of living here in china today right now by the way don't forget to like and subscribe well it's a bright day here in guangdong china and i had to come to this park for a walk now guys it's so beautiful out here today as you can see really sunny here in guangdong china this is a park as you can see it's been a while i haven't seen the sun so i had to come out today to have some fun at this park i love this park because of the lake and you can just walk around with no problems now when you're talking about freedom what do we really mean when we talk about freedom what is freedom actually because that's one of the very first points that people say every time that in china you have no freedom you have no freedom to practice your religion you have no freedom to do whatever you want if you even as much as jaywalk you will get a huge problem you'll be fined or your social credit score will be dropped drastically and you will get no way to be able to access many public facilities now guys so many people put a lot of pressure on the idea of social credit scores here in china but the truth is that in many countries around the west they have a similar system 
which isn't actually a social credit score and it's similar here in China for example if you have a stained record in the West or you have a problem with your bank in the West there are so many things that you can't have access to while living in the West of course for example if you have been to jail before in the West and if you have a problem with the government in the West you won't have access to loans you can't even start a business easily it happens everywhere I think that's how every country system works now when China does it they say it's a bad social credit system so many people say there are numerous cameras in China and the government watches your every move <laughs> but well guys when we talk about freedom what do we really mean is freedom equal to safety is safety equal to freedom there are so many places in the world where you can't even go out at night after 8 p.m after 7 p.m even once it gets dark here in china i've been living here for six years and i've gone out at any time of the night that i want from 12 a.m 1 a.m 3 a.m 4 a.m and you still see so many businesses late at night early in the morning thriving and selling a whole lot of stuff making a lot of money is that not freedom people are able to go out at any time of the night that they want and get any kinds of freedom that they want that's the kind of freedom i want freedom and safety because the truth is that freedom actually doesn't go alone freedom goes with safety if you are not safe you can't be free if there's a war in your country if there are people shooting and killing other people you can't be free to go out because if you go out you can lose your life or you can have a very big problem and that's what so many people fail to tell you about being free all the freedom we are talking about is it only in our minds or is it a reality that we all experience every day here in china there's a reason why when so many foreigners come to china they feel bright they smile more and they have a great time that's because here in china the priority of so many people is safety and of course safety in my own sense equals freedom because if you are safe if you know that when you go out at any time of the night you will be safe you have nothing to worry about so you are free to go out at any time that you want and that is what so many people fail to tell you about china they say you have no freedom to practice religion but there are so many different religions here in china if you move around china you will see muslims you will see buddhists you will see christians i have a friend i have friends who are christians i've lived in the chinese home for more than a month with a friend whose mom used to pray every night we used to pray together it's very normal and of course no one comes to bash your door and tell you oh you can't practice your religion oh you can't read the bible oh you can't go out because that's the idea that so many people have in their minds about living in china it's so sad the truth is that china is nowhere near perfect guys china has its downsides there are so many things that need to be fixed in china and i'm not saying that china is just this perfect society where everyone can do whatever they want and you have everything you want of course it's a work in progress just like in every country around the world the usa is not also a perfect country the uk is not also a perfect country countries around africa around europe is not perfect and when one country does it it's okay when china does it it's a very bad thing so what are we really talking about when we are bashing other people and not looking at others like when we have a big log of wood in our eyes and we are trying to point out the small toothpick in someone else's eye so we need to really look at what we are talking about when we say all of this because freedom is relative for example do you want the freedom to be able to commit crimes now millennials another sad lie is that so many people believe that china is the most racist country in the world <laughs> i've lived here in china for six years the truth is that there are always some set of people in every situation in every country that will be raised differently i would not want to show you love because of the skin color because of where you're from your cultural difference and of course there are always people like that everywhere but china is nowhere near what people say of course there have been some isolated situations we have experienced some interactions with a few persons that were not very kind but it's normal in every place you go you will definitely encounter such people but the problem is 
in many countries around the West, it's even worse. And here in China, I haven't gotten any reports of someone getting killed or shot with a gun just because they are black. Well, if you go online sometimes, people will say, oh, when you go to the Chinese social media, they talk about hating blacks and stuff like that. The truth is that online is a very bad place. The media is a very dangerous place, not just here in China, everywhere around the world. If you go on Instagram, if you go on Facebook, if you go on Western social media, even here on YouTube, and you read some of the comments from people around the world, you will realize that there are always a handful of people who are not the best. And it's similar to China, but it's no way near what people say, and it's not as compared to many countries around the world. But then you guys should understand that I've met some of the best people right here in China. Some of the most helpful people right here in China. I can say with my full chest that here in China I've met so many amazing friends. Some of the best friends I've found have been here in China during my six years. And of course one day I'll even bring some of them to this channel for chat so you can see some of my friends, some of my Chinese friends. And we have had so much, we have exchanged ideas, exchanged cultural ideas, and of course they care about people regardless of your skin color. So when people tell you China is the most racist country, there are isolated situations, but it's nowhere near what people portray China to be. So my point of view in this case is that do not listen to everything that people say about China when it comes to racial discrimination and bad situations against people of color and this one is funny guys this is a funny one where people said muslims are being killed in china minorities are being harmed in china and you can't go to a mosque and pray here in china well a couple of months back i went to xinjiang i was shocked because i used to believe everything that i heard in the media about xinjiang but it was quite different i didn't experience any of that i even visited a few mosques there in Xinjiang and it was quite different. I've seen a couple of Muslims, not just Uyghur Muslims, I've seen Hue Muslims and different religious people here in China and everyone is free to practice their religion. Now here's the catch guys, you are free to practice your religion here in China as far as you do not create an inconvenience to your neighbor. That's just the idea. You can be a Christian, you can be a Muslim, and practice your religion, go to church, go to the mosque, go to wherever you have to pray, go to any place you have to go to, but do not cause problems for your neighbor and do not use your religion to cause problems for other people because everyone has their right to practice their religion privately. And that is China for you, as compared to other places where if you do not accept my religion, we have a problem. That's a problem that so many people have, especially in the West, which is a very big problem because people tend to now harm other people of different religions because they do not believe in the same faith. Here in China, I think the priority is togetherness for everyone, no matter your religion, to be able to live together as a community. And I even learned that here in China, in almost every school or every university, if you go to the food canteen, there's a halal section or a section just for Muslims for those who do not eat uh, pork and other kind of stuff that are eaten by other religions so you get a special window where you can get food for Muslims which is amazing because I'm not sure you can find this in many other countries around the world but these kinds of stuff people will not tell you they will only focus on isolated situations where a few scenarios might happen and they will say oh this is what happened oh you're not free to practice your religion in china which is a very bad thing but then if we also pick out all the isolated situations in many countries around the world <laughs> i'm not sure there'll be enough space for all of us to share what we see or experience in many countries but because china does it china is extremely bad now millennials as if that is not enough so many people or the media the Western media, the news has been saying that China is going to invade Taiwan. They have been saying this for the past, almost the past decade, that China will invade Taiwan tomorrow. China will invade Taiwan next tomorrow. China will invade Taiwan next week, next month. They have been saying this so many times, that China will invade Taiwan, whether we like it or not. It's like they are pushing China to invade Taiwan. 
But the truth is that China has not attacked a country for at least a century, if I'm not mistaken. China hasn't gone to another country and attacked them with guns, with war tanks, warships, weapons, guns blazing. China hasn't done that for so many years. If China has an army, from what I have observed, most of the time they are just trying to secure their sovereignty. And they haven't attacked other countries, just like other countries around the world, attack other countries and kill people, kill children. I haven't seen China do that. And that's one thing the media will never tell you. They tell you China is going to attack Taiwan. Of course, there's tensions here in China on the Taiwan issue. There's tensions globally on the Taiwan issue. But the point is, since so many people are familiar with the idea that the big countries always attack smaller territories or smaller provinces or, or other countries, they feel that, okay, China has to attack. So they say, oh, China is going to attack Taiwan tomorrow. Oh, China is going to attack Taiwan next tomorrow, which is really far from the truth. Because one thing about China, which I've noticed while living here, is that they try to avoid wars at all costs. Because why would you want to develop your country like this? Make your country comfortable for the citizens and then destroy it with a war. I'm not sure the Chinese government here in China wants all of what they have built or they are building to be destroyed. Well, China just built all of this within a couple of years and they are still building. Do you think a government that tries to build will love to destroy? You should ask yourself that question because it's a rhetorical question actually. If you build something, you would never be happy to destroy that thing. And I think that's the idea that China works with. They want to build and create more togetherness, more community, not destroy. And that is the reason why they are using the bricks and the bed and road to be able to build and create more togetherness rather than destroying. So China wouldn't want to put money into stuff and then have it destroyed later. And they are doing it all around the world. Do you think they would do all of this then go and fight wars? So when we get all of this news from the media, let's try to think twice, do more research to understand the reality. Of course, some countries love wars, but from what I've observed within the past decade or so, China hasn't invaded any country. China doesn't invade countries to take over stuff. Well, who knows? Let's see what the future holds and we hope for the best. Wow, this is really beautiful, guys. Just take a look at this. It's a bright and sunny day here in Guangdong, China, and it's fun. And some people even said there are no birds in China. I've watched some YouTube videos here on YouTube where some people say there are no birds but as you can hear around me there are birds chirping on all of these trees and it's the same all around china so many birds <laughs> it's quite funny the kind of lies that people tell about china in the media and people just believe easily that's what scares me most because so many people believe all these lies which is very sad now talking about the birds here in china that reminds me of spine all the time People are gonna say, oh, there's a Chinese spy balloon, or there's a bird. Or oh, recently I saw a headline where they said a bird was spying for China in India. Sounds crazy, right? But it's not, it's actually true. They said China was spying on India using a bird. And I saw the video, it was really, really funny. And again, so many people in the West and countries in the West say that all Chinese gadgets will spy on people. Your phone, like Huawei, spies on people. The 5G is used by the Chinese government to spy on people. And recently they say BYD or the Chinese EVs are spying on people. You have no privacy when you use Chinese gadgets, when you use Chinese technology. Does that mean all the other gadgets that we have been using from the Western countries are used to spy on us? That's a huge question we need to be asking ourselves. But they have been saying this all the time and so many people believe them. So many people believe that all Chinese gadget or Chinese technology is a spy gadget. And they say the Chinese government, the CCP, uses all of this gadgets to spy on the citizens, to spy on people when they ship these gadgets out of China. Which is really sad when you think about it. Because I think that's real competition and of course the world needs to be open to competition. And now millennials, here's one of the funniest 
outrageous lies that has been told about China for the past 20 years. The Chinese economy is going to collapse. The Chinese economy has collapsed. The Chinese economy will collapse tomorrow. The Chinese economy will collapse next week. Oh, brace up for the Chinese economy collapsing. So many lies have been told about the Chinese economy for a very long time. But during my six years living here in China, I haven't seen any collapse. Instead, what I've seen here in China is more development, more growth, more infrastructure, more construction, more unity, more happiness, and people are able to buy. Of course, there are some issues with the Chinese economy. Why is that? Because there's a problem currently with the global economy. And as I've been saying before on this channel, as the Chinese economy is growing, more economies worldwide are also growing. So if the Chinese economy is actually collapsing, many economies will also collapse. But the truth is that, Williams, the Chinese economy is not collapsing. It's not been collapsing. Actually, it's reinventing itself, as I can say. Because one thing about China, which I've noticed while living here within the past six years, is that they always innovate, they update themselves to be able to adapt to the current trend from a traditional kind of society or economy to a more advanced society. We see right now everything is changing, everything is switching to AI, everything is switching to a more technologically advanced society and I think that's what China has been doing. So many people said, oh, many companies are leaving China. Oh, Vietnam is the next China. Oh, Mexico is the next China. India is the next China. But the point is, China is the next China, from my own point of view. Why is that? If you observe very well, you realize that China is now mainly focused on technology. Because, of course, they have seen that the world is changing. And the mindset right now is geared towards switching to AI, technology, and innovation. And that's one thing we need to understand. More people will need all of this in the near future. Production and manufacturing is no longer like in the past where people needed to do it hands-on. These days, almost everything has been switched to technology to make it much easier and faster. And that's what's happening with the Chinese economy. It's just updating itself, it's switching itself and updating clearly as we all can see. But then, so many news outlets, so many Western media outlets will tell you, oh, the Chinese economy is collapsing and there's a problem, and people are suffering in China. And they're gonna say, oh, if China is so good, why do people still leave China to the US? Why do people still leave China to go to the West and visit? Everyone travels, and the truth is that no matter how amazing China is, there's a currency difference. Hello! <laughs> Hello! Hey, you mean that? Come on! Caro! Oh! And that's Jaja! I'm from Cameroon! Come to me! Jaja! Wow! Having some. Uh, Come yeah, Cameroon. Come yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, so nice. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while we haven't seen some good sunshine, so it's nice. My name is William. Oh, yeah, William. How are you, William? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. This is nice. This is nice. Look at that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Huh? It's so nice. Look at her. She's relaxing over there. Wow. So comfortable. Yes. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. <laughs> wow. So nice. Thank you so much. I'm just walking around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm taking a walk in the park. What's that? Mama and Dog. Mama and Dog. Take a walk. Take a long. Yeah, take a walk around. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> wow. So guys, it's a really sunny day today, and they came out to have some fun. Of course, that's a picnic. 
this happens every time here in China. If you know China, then you actually know that this is the kind of life they live. If this was a dystopian society, do you think people would just live like this? <laughs> so many people will be worried instead. But then, oh, I know some people are gonna come and say, these are all paid actors, that they put them there so we can think, oh, China is this happy place where you can have a picnic. <laughs> I didn't even know I had to meet them there. I didn't even know I'll see some people there. But then that's the truth, guys. We need to look at things from a different perspective from what we have always known in the past. This is the world we live in right now. There's so much propaganda from every side. Of course, people are gonna say I'm paid or everyone coming to China is paid and they are sponsored by the CPC and the people living in China are not happy people and everything we do is scripted or everywhere we go is controlled by the government so that we can only show what the CPC wants us to show. <laughs> but that's not the truth. There have been so many vloggers from all around the world coming to China and sharing with you their real experiences. But then, so many people still won't believe and I don't understand the reason why. Again, the truth is that China is nowhere near perfect. China has its flaws, China has its downsides, but China is only a developing country, as I can say. It just came up recently and there's still so much work in progress and of course there are always a handful of people that will cause some trouble just like everywhere in the world and i've said this before there are good and bad people everywhere in the world in every country there are good and bad situations in every country there are good people bad people in the us in the uk across africa across europe across australia in every country around the world just like in china but then one thing i appreciate china for is their effort that they have been putting in to develop their country to create that unity to create that togetherness which is what we all need in a good and happy society and i hope more countries around the world can definitely replicate this because what is the reason for us fighting wars all the time where we can just help each other and hope for a better tomorrow because we are only here for a short time we're not here forever let's just keep doing our best let's keep working together when you get news about any country in the media you need to think twice before you make your final decision about that country and of course if i go to any other country i'll share my experiences too just like this i will not be in china forever i'm not going to live in china forever of course china is a happy place it's an amazing place but i love to explore i hope i'll be able to explore and guys when we say all of this let's also understand that china has 1.4 billion people and controlling 1.4 billion people is not an easy task just look at the u.s i think the u.s is a little over 300 million people and there's so much trouble just look at many countries around the world india for example is more than china and many other countries around the world it's not easy to control so many people but then take a look at china they have succeeded to be able to create a good and amazing and happy society for 1.4 billion people lifting up to 800 million people out of poverty and of course it's still a work in progress so when we try to bring up all of these points let's also analyze the facts and the numbers and of course from there we can better understand the reason why china is where it is today and that's one of the reasons why i personally appreciate how far china has come because many countries can definitely learn from this and replicate this in our own various countries especially in my own country in africa now guys thank you so much for watching this video if you want to see more amazing videos like this don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Remember, this is Willen. See you next time. It's a bright day. Really bright day. <laughs>